So the universe is made of stories, not atoms. How true it is. We all love stories. Stories have been part of our existence. But what happens in, our, in the real world? We all have been in those conference rooms, in those meetings, where everyone is just buried in their laptops, and then they have got this magical device in their hand called cell phone, through which they are tweeting, retweeting, updating their status on Facebook, watching news, watching sports, all in all. The audience that we have got over here is very distracted. So, so this is what happens when you start to tell a story. You'll see those faces coming out, and they start watching at you, and they start listening. This is when you start to make a pitch. This is when you start to tell it, the insights that you have been working on. So, let, so, this is where, so you might say that, yes, we all know that storytelling is very important, but how do we tell stories with data? So some of us ask the same question to the master storyteller in Microsoft, <laughs> Dr. James Whitaker, and his response was, you start with a personal story so that people could connect, they could relate uh, with it, and then comes the spreadsheet or comes the numbers. While I agree with that 100%, what I see is there are still more we could do when presenting the data. So this is what I'll try to cover in today's session, but before we dive into that, let me tell you a story. So lately I've been very occupied with work and wasn't paying much attention at home, so my wife and daughter were not very happy about it. So I thought I'll do something to make them happy. And one fine day I said, Yes, it's enough. Today I'm going to give my neural network some break and we'll spend some quality time with the family. Listening to this, my wife gave me a smile back and my daughter yelled, yay, today we're going to play with Legos. Legos? I thought I wanted to give break to my neural network, but it was her choice. I said, all right, today we'll play Legos. And uh, then she brought all these different color Legos. They were reds, the whites, yellows, blues, greens, all different colors in different shapes and sizes. So I spent some 30 minutes in playing with those Legos in different uh, shapes and sizes, sorting those things, and creating some beautiful structures, at least what I thought were beautiful. So these were my inventions uh, after spending just some 30 minutes with the Legos. So there is a Mikea sofa for you. There is an apple tree, and ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you for the first time the much rumored Surface Phone. So these were a few things that I created, and uh, my daughter looked into the, these things, and she was happy, like she giggled, yay, and then she asked me a question. She asked, Baba, would this phone sleep on the sofa, or did someone leave it in the park under the tree? So basically she was asking, she was craving for a story. But all the time that I spent was just massaging and sorting and creating these structures, I didn't have a story. And she was just craving for the story. I just said, Baba spent so much time in just creating these structures for you, and now you can come up with any story with you you want. Uh, it was almost 8 p.m. that time, and my wife called us for dinner we had a happy meal, and after that, our daughter went to sleep, and I went back to work. But her question kept coming back to me, what is the story? What are these beautiful structures that I created? How are they talking to each other? And I was there, glaring at my laptop, staring at it, and looking at my Power BI dashboard and the beautiful charts that I create, spending so much energy, and they look exactly similar to those Lego structures. They were not talking to each other. There are different charts that I've created, uh, and which is very easy nowadays with the Power BI or those tools. But what I've done is I spent all my energy, and I was very proud of all those ETLs thing that I was doing. Uh, I, I created those Azure Data Factory, massaging the data, and then Azure Stream Analytics jobs, and finally pushing this data onto Power BI. And I also told to my boss, that, hey, this is the first time ever anyone has done in a, this in our group, and I was very proud of it. 
But her question kept coming back to me, how are these pieces together? What is the story that's coming out of these structures that I created? So that's where I started a little bit of research and I said, okay, let me see what is it, uh, how do we tell story with data? So storytelling with data. Storytelling with data is more like writing a comic book. So as you see, you have got Garfield, which is some of our favorite, and you see how the sequence flows. You start, you have got the middle, and then you have got the ending. I'll give you a few seconds for you to read the story, or in a very few, few, uh, few seconds, you'll be able to see what's the sequence, how it is flowing. Can we do something similar with the data? Let's see. And I'll go to a demo. All right, so what you're seeing over here is uh, all, all the beautiful Lego structures that I created, similar to that. You've got some of the URLs when people are searching for data science, and this is data science dojo. Let me talk about data science when people are searching for data science. What are the sites they are going to? Are we seeing an uptake and all those things? So this is what I created. But then let me turn it into the Garfield story uh, that you saw and see if uh, we can see some difference. And this is the same, we are still in the Power BI desktop or the report that you may call. So what you are seeing over here is, there are different search terms that I searched for, and there's a Power BI solution template for that, so you can see how, what, who pe what people are searching for, for a particular keyword, where are they going, and other stuff. So I, ha I worked on this project where people were searching for these keywords since 2015 and onwards. And what you are seeing over here is most of the searches for data science goes to the Wikipedia. Look at the second and the third link. It goes to HTTP and HTTPS is the difference. And then the fo it's followed by Coursera, Masters in Data Science, uh, Berkeley and all those uh, different places that people are going to. So there is a thirst, people want to learn about data science, so that's why they are going over there. And here there should be an S3 graph, which is not loading because I'm not connected to internet at this point, but it would show the different locations where people are searching for data science. Um, and then I, I looked further into this thing about an interest in in a degree or so a certification. So we see a, uh, I don't think it gives me an option to increase it, but uh, yeah. So we see a increase and in a spike in people look, searching for a degree or a certification in data science. What are the top universities people are visiting when they search for data science? And then jobs, what are the sites that they go when they search for data science? So you see indeed.com is the number one site where people are going for when they search for data science uh, in, the, uh, in the search engine. And then I, I also did a little bit parsing of uh, this, uh, uh, of indeed.com to see how many job postings are there in in indeed.com and what location they are. So where are the jobs? Again, like this is the S3 graph, they which should have loaded if I was connected to internet. Uh, but it shows the location. So what I was looking at was uh, on the East Coast, there is a large, uh, like there is a big requirement of uh, uh, data science uh, jobs. Like there are a lot of jobs available. But if you look at the thirst, it's mostly on this. Uh, on our side, like uh, on the IT capitals like Seattle, uh, San Francisco and other places. So maybe there is a need to merge these things together. There is a thirst, there are the jobs available. And then who is hiring? So you have got the different companies who are hiring. And then even you look, you, you just have it, had a PISA. So there, is, there are also opportunities for, for data scientists in PISA Hut. 
so it just comes out so I wanted to highlight that and further what I did was I did a string uh, uh, text extraction to see and this is just on the basis of the summary description that you get on indeed.com just a few uh, 20 uh, words or something what are the top things that people are uh, looking for when they have a, a role for a data scientist uh, in indeed.com so all different things but we I, I can go on and on and spend couple of hours just describing about the d different stuff that uh, we figured out of this project but I just wanted to highlight how far we came from these structures to start telling a story and combining everything together. We started with just uh, some of the charts and left it to the audience to discover that, hey, there is a data. I have done enough job on extracting the data, pushing into the Power BI. Now it's job for the marketing people or job of the product management to figure out what data they want. And often it would go into trash, like they would go with their gut feeling but instead of that, now you tell a story, you go one step ahead. So that was uh, one of the thing, one of the demo I wanted to show. And going back, so storytelling with data. So there are these uh, pre-attentive attributes also that comes into play when you start telling a story. You would remember Pizza Hut, it was coming out uh, green in a green color. So you could make it out like what, what are we talking about? Where is it that you want to stress importance on? So we'll do a small exercise over here. Can you count the number of Diet Coke cans in this picture? Six. How about now? Is it easier now? and now and now so these are what we call as pre-attentive attributes you started with showing different things all all the different charts together every every piece of the uh, of the screen is uh, catching your eye when you look at the, it for the first time or your audience is looking at the first time where is it that i need to pay attention to should i pay attention here 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 but as we changed uh, just the colors you would see okay these this is the highlighted item pizza hut that was the highlighted item which i wanted to talk about so like that diet coke and then further you have got these arranged in a sequence so that you can identify these things much earlier so what we are trying to do is we are trying to reduce the load on the user so we, we may we want to make it very easy for the user who is very distracted the, remember, you would see people with their laptops hidden their face over there, uh, tweeting, retweeting, and you want them to just quickly glance and get your message. So that's what we are trying to do over here. So these are what we call as pre-attentive attributes. So these attributes could be in different forms. You see, this could be in orientation could be different, length, width, size, shape, curvature, some marks that you can add, enclosures, color, hue. So we looked into one, one aspect of it, a hue, like you change the color and immediately your focus or your attention went over to that particular piece. And for, forgive my bad drawing, but uh, I, I tried to just create uh, uh, some graph, uh, uh, some picture, and then this guy just uh, immediately stands out that, yeah, this is like as humans we love the odd balls we want to figure out what is it which is odd what is what is it which is different and then storytelling with data another aspect is text is your friend uh, let me do another demo for that and uh, i hope it is still connected So recently I got a parking ticket uh, in Redmond and I was very puzzled like uh, why am I getting parking ticket how many incidents uh, have been happening as a data scientist like I would just love getting the data so this data comes from 
uh, Seattle uh, Police Department, and I merged this data, and I wanted to figure out what should I do next so that I don't get the parking ticket. And uh, here what you see is these are the different parking violation tickets that happened since uh, in 2016, so I was not alone. And that was a big relief that uh, there, there are 44.6 thousand uh, uh, parking violations that happened recorded in the 911 log. And the peak time to get a ticket is 8 a.m. So try avoiding uh, bad parking during that at that particular time. And then what is what is what are the different locations where you people are getting most of the parking violations? So it turns out there is this Harbor Avenue where you where we see a lot of uh, parking violation, a lot of parking violation tickets uh, people get. So I, I would try to avoid that as well. And then you see over here, Sunday and Saturday there is a dip. So the reason, and it was like, uh, uh, I, I was giving this talk uh, to a different audience and the cameraman, like uh, he came to me after the talk and said, do you know why this happens? This happens because over the weekend you have a free uh, free parking, so there are less number of tickets over the weekend. So that was an insight that came out uh, from a non-technical person who was just recording the video. So maybe that's what happened. And then here you see peak in summer months, which is happening. So here, like uh, I think I spent a couple of hours uh, in just uh, massaging this data and getting this story. But you could play around and create more things like uh, with public data or even your personal or your business data and use your text appropriately instead of uh, having all those uh, different clutters like uh, if i have if i would have gone with uh, the regular rhythm i would have got a y axis over here and then there would be different lines which would which would be coming in between i don't want to show that what i wanted to show was 8 a.m. was the highest time, uh, was the time that I should be avoiding doing a wrong parking. That's it. If it, uh, it doesn't matter, matter whether it's uh, 100,000 tickets or the, whether it's uh, uh, 200,000 tickets, that's the thing that I want to avoid. I want, just want to show that there is a difference between weekend or weekdays. So I, I get that message. And, uh, This is Seattle Police Department, so seattle.gov. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing is, is there any way you can do I can do that usually, but let's see if uh, it allows me. Correct, like if it, you have to, uh, if you're using an Right, exactly. So that's what we want to trigger, right? So with the, these uh, things, like with, when you start storytelling with data, instead of having all those uh, clutters in your eyes, now I've got your attention. You are listening and you are asking the question. So that's uh, the win that uh, I have. Otherwise, uh, if you were just uh, tweeting, retweeting, and you were lost, uh, we, we would have lost this conversation. So this is a good conversation that we are having. So. But again, going back to this thing, like I just spent a couple of hours uh, and I wanted to show some public data set which you could use and show some kind of a trends. It could be anything, like uh, as I said about the weekend parking, it was a non-technical guy coming after the uh, meetup uh, he, and mentioning me, hey, this could be the reason. I said, yes, that could be the reason. And we can spend uh, more time on to it. So let me...
right right so there, it could be anything I and mean, there are a lot of interesting insights that could come out of it uh, there, the, and there is also go, the go, the government. There is this thing going on about zero fatalities on road. So there is a project going on with the data kind, uh, working with Microsoft uh, to help figure out uh, what what are the places where we have more number of casualties casualties, and we try to avoid that with the data. So this is just one aspect into it. Like it's not uh, so the session today is not about dealing into a specific insight. Uh, whether like which day or which month we have the parking ticket, like it's more about uh, um, how do you try to tell a story through the data instead of coming with the regular charts and the regular uh, data points. Uh, maybe you have some kind of a way so you have the attention of the audience uh, when you are telling the story. So. And then uh, this is uh, something that I didn't create, but this was uh, uh, in Tableau someone created, and I, I just loved it. Uh, if you remove the pictures over here and the text from here, would this data still appeal to you? Would you look at at the first time like the way you are looking at it now? It immediately ta talks about things about uh, crocodile sightings in Australia. What are the places where uh, which is where it is happening are crocodiles moving to south uh, and then the different location how many crocodiles were removed it's uh, I, I just love the way the, this guy represented uh, this told the story with the data you might find these things in your geographic channels uh, and other things but I just wanted to highlight uh, uh, a way you are visualizing the data instead of just the regular charts where everyone is just bored looking at the same data all the time. The the crocodile thing? That that was all everything Power BI. Yeah. So everything, all the demos that I am showing, like it's not PowerPoint. It's uh, completely Power BI. And uh, there are a lot of things you could do. Like ideally, I didn't want to use PowerPoint at all. I would have loved to do everything in just Power BI. I don't have to shuffle from different uh, tools. And uh, the product team is working on it, but still it has a lot to, way, way to go. But uh, again, it's, you, you don't have to shuffle between Excel and the different, point, uh, different tools. Uh, you, you just uh, do it in Power BI or Tableau or whatever. Uh, tool works best for you. So another thing is animation can help. Uh, let's see uh, another demo for that. This is again Power BI, and uh, what I'm trying to tell here is a story about Bangladesh. Uh, the, the beauty of working over here in US uh, or in Seattle, I've been here for the last 10 years, is that you will find people from different backgrounds uh, you, you, and different countries. Like even here, if we start asking the question, you'll see at least there would be f four or five different countries where you have got people from different locations. So, I, I was looking at some data about Bangladesh, and uh, Bangladesh is a very interesting country. Uh, what you would see over here is, uh, first of all, I want to take you to uh, the Power BI stuff and uh, pay attention to some of the pre-attentive attributes. Look at the color, like the use of color. You've got Bangladesh, and then the green color is associated with their flag, so I'm trying to use the same thing, and I'm talking about what Bangladesh is. Uh, and then, now going back to the story, Bangladesh uh, is a very interesting country because uh, if you look into the size of population, like uh, its population is almost uh, on the seventh place in uh, ranking in the world, 
but if you look into the population density, it's almost 1,100 people per square kilometer. So think about it, like uh, this is uh, uh, so many people we are talking about. And when I came from India 10 years back, I, I would be amazed like not finding people over here. And I, I, I said, well, I, I don't see anyone over here on the road. I, even if we get lost in India, you'll just uh, find anyone and uh, ask uh, routes. You don't need a GPS for that. And uh, over here, it's hard to find people, uh, especially on the uh, during winter time. So maybe that's why they created GPS. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 th so that's uh, one thing. And then going back to Bangladesh, like uh, there was, uh, uh, so India was uh, comprised of these three countries: India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. And uh, le let me go further down and tell you a little bit more and keep observing the pre-attentive attributes that you have got. So we are talking about Bangladesh. If you go with the regular charts, what you would see is everything would be of similar colors. Here, I wanted to highlight that Diet Coke example which I gave earlier. So you see Bangladesh just catching your eye that it's on the seventh place. And it's uh, in seventh place in terms of uh, the total world population, China, India, US, and then Bangladesh over there. And Let's see what we have got. In terms of population density, which I was talking about, Bangladesh stands number one, and 1,100 people per square kilometer, which is very interesting. And then a little bit inspiration from uh, Hans Rosling, and what you have got over here is a course in history. So what you are seeing on the x-axis is child date deaths before age five. So out of 100, pe 100 people, five, 10, 15, 20, 25 people, ch children dying before they attain the age of five. On the y-axis, you see children per women. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, we are here in Power BI, it's not PowerPoint, okay? And here I've done, uh, created two different sections. These are the industrialized countries. You see United States, France, United Kingdom, Japan uh, over there. And then you've got India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Just these countries, because I want to stress just about uh, what happened when India was broken into Pakistan and Bangladesh. And the size of the bubble represents the population. That's why you see India as a, uh, uh, as a fat bubble uh, compared to the rest of the countries. It's just because I want to highlight on those country. So what we'll do now is this was 1961 and 1960. And what you would see is that there were around 27 children dying uh, out of 100, 27 children dying in Bangladesh Pakistan, India, around 25 children were dying before they attained the age of five. And here, the number of kids uh, per women, you've got India with six, Bangladesh, Pakistan with seven. Let's see what happens next. And I'll highlight Bangladesh a little. So here, you would see Bangladesh, 1971 to 72, 73, uh, and then it's going down. India is coming down. China, which uh, which got uh, earlier in the in the industrialized world, India following Pakistan still up uh, with more women. Bangladesh uh, trying to cross uh, uh, India, and in 94, 95 would it cross India? 97, 98, 99 it crossed India already in terms of children per women, and then number of children death. Pakistan is still up, and then here in 2011, 2012, you have got Bangladesh doing better than India and Pakistan. Pakistan was still with more than four kids per women, and then India was over here, and then Bangladesh did an amazing job. If you look at, uh, about in the history, people were kind of uh, amazed, like uh, the progress that Bangladesh has made because of the population, uh, religion, culture, everyone was thinking that what would happen over there, like it just ke keeps growing and then there are more deaths that are happening. So we'll do a action replay again and you would see what's going on.
So 1964, 65, Bangladesh, and, and even knows what happened in 71. So there was a peak that happened till 71. So 71 is the time when Bangladesh was separated from Pakistan. And then suddenly after that, you would see that it's going down in terms of the number of children per women. There were imams talking about uh, uh, child control. And then it's amazing, like out of 27 children dying in, uh, in, in 1960, out of 100, now you would see them uh, around 2.7 or something, and then the kids per women, look at Pakistan over here, you've got India over here, and then Bangladesh still going down. So it's an amazing journey. And everything what we are trying to do is we are trying to tell story with data. And here we use animation, we use different colors. I would have loved to use uh, the green color consistent with what I was showing earlier, but because of some limitation in Power BI, I couldn't do that. And the different colors that I was representing was also high income or lower middle uh, income. So these are the different uh, legends. So that's what uh, we have. And uh, if you want and you are more curious how other countries did, maybe we can do a little bit more on that. I can play around with the filter and you would see, now you would see all the countries and see how like there are the, these different buckets, the developing world and the industrialized world, how the different countries are doing. You've got India, China coming up uh, pretty frequent, like uh, much faster than you've got India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, different countries. Nigeria is still over here, 1984, 1985. Uh, you've got uh, some of the Arab countries uh, with the high population, Saudi Arabia over there with more kids per women, but uh, le less death. Nigeria moving, and you would see Afghanistan still uh, above there with more kids per women, but you've got uh, less number of deaths. So overall, the world is, we are seeing an improvement in the world that there are less deaths are happening, but there is more we have to do. And if I had Syria over here and with everything which is happening in the world today, you would see maybe a different outlier which would stand out that are more deaths which are happening and other things. So this is just a storytelling with data. You used animation appropriately to just tell what happened uh, in Bangladesh and you use the colors. So, let me go back. So that was the mortality rate. And what else? Okay, so I am part of the Microsoft Learning Academy team and what we do over there is we create these online courses uh, through which uh, people could learn and take uh, like a data science track. We recently launched a data science track in Microsoft. Uh, so I just uh, created a video uh, and uh, I want to show some of the animation that uh, helped out. So. We did a pilot and we wanted to show how the first 100 days went. This is still Power BI. There is a little bit of uh, uh, adjusting that I did over here, but you've got a course, you've got the different users, you start the course and how the different users are behind that. And then a week change, we launched another course and how the distribution happened. You see there is a bunch which is still common between these two different courses and then there are still people who are still doing the first course. You've got querying with T-SQL, uh, and then you've got the data science orientation, and then another week passed and we launched more courses, and uh, you see the distribution happen changing. And uh, I, I'll just let you watch the video and then you could see just with the animation how different things you could do. So week starting June 5th, you've got more things, new courses lighting up, 
and there are still people who are taking both the courses there are still people who just started with the first course and then kind of uh, still stuck with that so parallel set of courses were launched intro to python intro to r so a new course is launched this is the time when we launched the final project and this is again like just the pilot when which we launched so how people are staying in different courses whether they are sticking still into the first course which was launched like a data science orientation or how is the movement so you have got a lot of people right over here with project capstone and the last few bits of courses so that kind of tell you a story about um, using some of the an animations so you don't use the regular charts uh, that you do on a regular basis but we used animation uh, to kind of tell how the different courses are doing whether the users are still stuck with the first of the course or they are doing with more uh, so let's see okay so i i think that was uh, pretty much some of the things that i learned uh, uh, about storytelling with data and there are still more examples that i've got uh, i've done uh, some stuff with gun violence uh, how many people are, are, are getting killed and then everything that you you, you, you saw today was in power bi and um, again the thanks for raja and uh, data science dojo for giving the opportunity to present over here uh, i'll welcome any questions comments or different things which other people might have uh, learned Yes. So, I don't know about any other folks, but when I see Power BI demos coming out of Microsoft, I don't see this. I see the first thing. Right? Yes. The first thing so, could you talk more about if I wanted to build stuff like that in Power BI, how would I actually do like step by step building that? Everything I see looks more like in the first thing, like you could like push the bar chart and little description of what I'll talk is. Yeah, I, 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 I would love to do that, and you are right. Like, uh, th that's this uh, culture that we are trying to change. And still, people are stuck into that, uh, creating those regular charts and the regular graphs through which uh, uh, it's because it is very easy nowadays to create something in Power BI. Like, it's just a drag and drop. But uh, again, there are a lot of clutters that you can remove. Uh, yeah, question. There you go. Yeah, is that all visualization? Is that all it is? It just takes some time to reframe it. And you have a black background, so that I can understand. But it doesn't seem like it's necessarily 
Yeah, yeah it's not very complicated. It's just that. that Yeah, so let, let me give you an example. I thought I'll do a uh, makeover dashboard, uh, but uh, I didn't have uh, a right example, but maybe this might work. So this is the usual stuff that you see on a regular basis. And uh, what you're seeing over here is, there is a lot of clutter that, uh, that comes into eyes. So wh when I'm looking at it for the first time, I, I just get lost, like there are too many things. Uh, you see the filters on the right side, but here in the English speaking world, we normally have a tendency to either go from left to right or top to bottom. So I would have these filters over there on the left side. And uh, let, me, let me show a little bit, uh, try to do a little bit of change. And control A. Yeah, and I've selected everything, uh, but maybe it doesn't like that yet. No? Okay. So one at a time. what we are trying to do is we are just trying to remove some what they call is a chart junk and you would immediately see the difference so just by removing the borders you see there is a less clutter into your eyes your eyes are not going uh, into those borders now you are concentrate you can concentrate more on uh, the rest of the stuff let me do a little bit of change again and not many people know but we do have a drop down uh, in the filters which you could use and So see the difference. You don't want to show all the filters, like what all the values are available. You want to make it very neat. And further, like one thing which I really like and I saw see less people doing over here is change the page size. So it defaults by 16 to 9. But uh, what I've done in some of the other report is I want to use more canvas. I don't want to just uh, go into these ac accordion like going with uh, from here data science to jobs to machine learning to big data and recommendations I usually want to have everything in a single flow otherwise uh, it's very hard to follow okay from here you go to the next tab and uh, what you could do further is I don't know why I am looking up and doing all these things but uh, it, there was a way to duplicate but uh, so view and you change the page view to actual size over here. Display settings. Okay, this is good. I think this will be easier. No. Yeah, so further what you could do is uh, you could uh, go and add a heading over here, 
you could move those filters on the left side or from the top to bottom and then do you really need this chart like there are a lot of bubbles which i see like people get impressed by the bubbles but does it still make sense what about the uh, tree map it just shows me six or seven labels and all these different colors i can change those colors into something else so if you look over here for data science what i have got over here is i did something similar right so i changed uh, the page layout and i've got a title which helps a lot like uh, what are we talking about i'm adding text over here and uh, further i've got the same tree map which you saw initially but here what i have done is i played around with the colors i don't want all the different colors coming into my eyes i only want to highlight a particular thing if there is a difference like pizza hut was a different thing i wanted to highlight rest everything i change into a custom color which kind of matches with the background and the uh, theme that i am going with so you could do the similar thing over here and then there are other things uh, uh, other tricks you could do so 911 yeah so what you are seeing over here is it looks more uh, like there are just two colors over here so that's why you are like it looks uh, more clean and it's uh, coming to your eyes instead of uh, all the different things so what i've done over here is uh, right now this is a screenshot the sv thing like uh, as i have a title when sv doesn't work because um, when i was publishing it on the web they don't have uh, sv supported the time when i created this i don't know if they support it now uh, but uh, behind that what i have done here is i have i'm choosing the same colors so the same black background that you have got is matching this thing so from sv there is theme that you have got about different uh, 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 different maps so either it could be black green or uh, black and white so i chose the same color in the background so that's my custom color so when you look into this uh, map and you look into this report it kind of uh, uh, matches uh, both of them so there is a mix in color so that's what i have done and then i have got some of uh, uh, things that i'm hiding so if you look into the regular sre map you'll have those plus and minus signs which are coming uh, which uh, again comes to your eyes so what i have done here is that i've taken a, a, a screenshot and saved it as, as image and i have lying it over here and lying it over here so that the borders Uh, are still like uh, not coming into your eyes because the border usually is white or grayish so that's uh, a, a little trick that i have done so is that the static screenshot is that what you're saying yeah so let me is show you yeah so just a minute if uh, find my mouse so this is the sre chart that i have which is not working because i am not connected to internet uh, that's what you see and uh, let me that's live data yeah so that's what i was talking about i've got these uh, things which were hiding so you see this image which i had which was kind of uh, re removing the borders uh, so that it doesn't come into your eye so it's another thing over here there is another thing over here so lot of uh, <laughs> uh, these things which are hiding uh, stuff which don't comes into your eyes because the beauty with the data or presenting any stuff is you only want to show things which are relevant uh, if you you you'll work with uh, so much data in cleansing and other things but we 
tend to show all the stuff that we have done uh, in terms of data that you have got so much data I want to show all these millions of records that I got from Azure Data Factory and I've churned and all those things but to the audience it doesn't matter and same goes in terms of visualization so here I don't want to see show things which are not making sense the border or if there are limitation I play around with those limitation in terms of adding some of the images um, and then there are some uh, tools which you have got on the web which uh, you can go in Google Chrome there is a add-in through which I can figure out what color is this and uh, with that color I can change the background of my Power BI report or my screen or my layout or all those things so so that those are some of the tips that I use Right. Right. So I haven't played a, a lot with uh, mobile uh, uh, layout, but uh, it depends on uh, how you are doing presenting the data and where you are presenting the data. So when you are in person, there are a lot of things I could talk about, right? So there is a narrative. Even though I've done storytelling with data, but if uh, for Bangladesh, is if I was not talking about the history and all those things and dancing around uh, here uh, with the map, uh, you might miss the, those things. But maybe since we are recording this on YouTube and then someone watches, they'll have that narrative. But in the absence of that narrative, what you do is you play around with the text that you have, like uh, in case of that crocodile example that I gave, or maybe I tried uh, to do a little bit over here. Uh, so if you go back to your mobile, uh, I, I, I think you still need a narrative. You can play around like uh, with the standard business charts uh, and uh, show that in mobile, but uh, still there is a human aspect which comes out. Yeah. Is there a way to, to view the phone layout compared to, because well, many web designers nowadays design mobile first. Right. Kind of like the desktop. Right. And with the younger generation, the platform is the phone. So if you're right. sharing information, I mean, the text here, for example, is very small, but you know that you're, you're basically presenting it on a large screen. Great. Right. But if you are passing it through to a phone screen. Right. Yeah, I, I think if you're asking in terms of utility, whether Power BI provides that, I think Power BI does provide that. Right. So if you go over here in the view. Would that affect the narrative? Right, so it, go, it goes. It has to be legible on the phone. That's correct. So yeah, infographics don't, don't work very well on the phone in general. So I just wanted to see if possible to see the layout for one thing. And secondly, in the workforce now, as you know, you may people go personal, or you let's say you're on the team and you're doing some sort of, you know, not just like a go to meeting or something. I mean, you know, you, you operate on a phone. Have you had the experience? I mean, in your experience, how much of that? Yeah, not much because uh, what I've been doing is like uh, there, there is this standard BI team which will create all those BI dashboards which would be standard and uh, it will be like you will be refreshing the data automatically. The business leaders come and they they look into those dashboards. You have got Cortana on your phone. You say, "Hey, Cortana, show me all the different parking violations that happened on Monday." It gives you the answer. It just shows you those different graphs. So. You could do that, but uh, what I've been doing uh, myself is like uh, it's more of uh, uh, doing the analysis and then telling the story. Like it's not about providing the uh, in like uh, a standard report that you go to. That's the next question that often comes: is that hey, this is great that we have got all these parking violations, 
and then Raja can ask me, hey, can you create this uh, report which uh, is refreshes on a regular basis uh, so that uh, I know where uh, to park my car next. So that, goes, that request goes to uh, the BI team which will take care of all these nuances about the form factor and other things. But uh, right now the work that I do, like it's more of you go out and you persuade the audience like, hey, this is why you should be investing in this and not in that. And often like uh, 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 this is also very important is because as a data scientist or uh, as an analyst, uh, we do a lot of time in writing these algorithms, very complex algorithms, uh, or using all those packages and other things. And then uh, how much time do we spend in communication? Like we always mostly s sit in silos and hey, I've created all these uh, uh, algorithms and now you can use these algorithms and I'm done, I want the next project. But uh, you should go out, persuade the business that, hey, this is why you should do that. Have them relate to you. Maybe start with some personal story so that they are not on their phones or their devices. And then you, they, they come and they ask more questions that, hey, maybe we can look into some of the other data as well. Any other question, comments? Uh, I do right now in these examples, I have not. So uh, they are doing uh, a little bit of integration with uh, R in Power BI. So I, I, I use it uh, in, t in doing clustering and other things in, in terms of us using those uh, algorithms which uh, comes from the R packages. But in terms of visualization, I haven't played a lot with R integrating with Power BI. But it, just uh, different tools you could use. You can use R, Python. There's also uh, uh, Gephi, which is uh, one of the networking tool which I've been playing around recently a lot. Uh, so not much uh, that I've done wi with Power BI, but uh, there are different things you could do with it. Yeah, the beauty with uh, Power BI or uh, such tools is that you can refresh the data and then it comes back to you on a, uh, if someone wants to see it. And uh, again, you could do similar thing with R as well in terms of uh, integrating it with the Jupyter Notebooks and other things, run the same queries. Any other question, comments? All right, thank you, so thank you.